Okay. Uh, so good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is doing okay, even though it's still pretty early. Uh, my name is Tomasz Muros, and today I'm gonna present the Love It and Virgo project. Uh, I know you're probably thinking, what the hell is that? Because it, both of the projects have kind of a cryptic name, but I'll dive in soon, and you'll soon find out. So here's uh, here's the ag agenda. And who am I? I'm uh, Tomasz Muros. I work at Rackspace. Uh, I used to work on cloud monitoring, which is a REST-based, fully distributed monitoring system. And currently, I work on service registry, which is a REST-based API for registering your services and your processes. I'm also a project chair of a Apache Deep Cloud project, which is a project which deals with working with different cloud APIs and also like open source and open standards. So what is Lovit? Lovit is a framework or a platform for building different network applications written in Lua. Lovit exposes a Node.js API, but on top of Lua. I don't know how familiar you are with the Node.js, but Node.js is, is basically a server-side JavaScript. Basically, you can write your networking applications in JavaScript, and Lovit aims to do the same thing, but instead, instead of writing your apps in JavaScript, you can do it in Lua. So Lovit stands, uh, they're basically, uh, Lovit name is composed of three words. First one is, first letter is L, which stands for Lua, which is, which is the language you write your apps in. Second abbreviation is UV, which stands for the libuv. libuv is the actual C library, which deals with the cross-platform and the event loop stuff, which is also used by Node.js. That's one of the biggest users and also used by Lovit. And the third part stands for Luajit, which is a, a just-in-time compiler for Lua. So Lovit is a open source project licensed under Apache 2.0. So here's a quick example to get you excited. If you're familiar with Node, you can probably already see what the example does, but basically it starts an HTTP server and when you hit it, you get a back response which says, welcome to FASDEM. So the code in JavaScript would actually look pretty similar. There's some syntactic differences because Lua doesn't have object, but it has like tables and meta tables and there's some minor differences there, but otherwise the API is pretty similar. So some history, uh, Lovit project was originally developed by Tim Caswell. Tim Caswell is a pretty cool guy. You should probably go check out his GitHub page and follow him there because he has a bunch of cool and crazy projects. I think at the moment he's working in his own language. So basically he has a bunch of cool stuff, but uh, Lovit is a pretty young project. First version, version was released in 2011, and soon after the first version was released, my team at Rackspace decided to help with the project because basically uh, we decided to use it for our monitoring agent, which I'll describe more later. So yeah, like the slide says, there were we contributed a lot to the project, and we're still contributing. So. Uh, if nothing else, there are also a bunch of other independent contributors, but there are also a bunch of, uh, a couple of paid people working on it. So yeah, why should you care? First thing, I guess, is Lua is cool. I personally like Lua more than JavaScript, although it does have some bad parts which are similar to JavaScript. For example, JavaScript doesn't have 64-bit integers. It has this messy number type, which makes a lot of things diff uh, difficult. And there, uh, there's pretty much the same problem in Lua, but in Lua you have other things such as coroutines and other stuff. So Lua was primarily developed by, I think, some academics in from Bra Brazilian university. And it's used a lot as a secondary slash scripting language in different apps and games and so on. I guess a couple of popular uses are World of Warcraft game, where I think the graphical interface and uh, AI is built in Lua, and Epson VM, which is a tiling window manager. And one of the strong points, I guess, or one of the 
Many reasons Lua exists is because it's easy to embed it. It provides a simple C-based stack API, which means you push a value on a stack and you can pop it, pop it off, and that's basically how you integrate with other languages. So here's an example of the uh, C-based stack API. As you can see, you, can, you push an integer on a stack and you push the integers and then you call the function you previously saved the reference to and you get a result back. So it's basically, it's pretty easy to embed it. So what is Virgo? Uh, Virgo is a monitoring agent we built at Rackspace for running on many different servers. So when we decided to build the agent, we, we had some requirements in mind. And one of the requirements was, I guess, decent performance and low memory footprint because this agent is gonna run on your server pretty much all the time and you probably don't want this agent to affect other services like web server or whatever running on your server. So that's why we decided to go with Lovid. So yeah, basically Virgo is not just a Rackspace cloud monitoring agent, but it's a platform for building other host agents. Host agents is basically pretty much any kind of long running process which performs some kind of action on host operating system. In our case, this is collecting metrics and sending them back to their endpoint, but you could also use it, for example, to execute commands on your system and so on. So yeah, why did we pick Lovit? One of the goals was, as previously mentioned, was uh, low memory footprint, and uh, we basically wanted to speed up the development cycle. If the agent would be written in C, this would probably would probably get even lower memory usage, but this means we need to deal with uh, manual garbage collection and so on, and it will also, the whole development cycle would be pretty slow, so we basically have uh, core, which bootstraps, which pretty much bootstraps the process, which is written in C, and the core is pretty much responsible for uh, handling the option parsing and logging, but the rest of the stuff is outsourced to the Lovit layer, so pretty much all of the business logic is written in Lua, which allows us to also, besides the faster development cycle, it also allows us to, uh, Basically, if we want to ship the update, we can just ship the updated Lua code and we don't need to restart the whole process. We can just reload the Lua code and without restarting the whole process, we can reload the business logic. Um, that's stuff I previously already mentioned and one of the things I also wanted to add is we also wanted to make it really secure because there are a bunch of other monitoring agents written in R Ruby, Python, and so on and some of those agents don't even use HTTPS or a secure connection. So our goal was to only use a secure connection on all the bundles. Bundle is basically a tar package which contains a Lua code is signed. And also the binaries are signed. The actual signing depends on the platform. We use the uh, Debian specific stuff on Debian systems and on Windows we also use the Microsoft thing for signing the exec executables. So we pretty much yeah, made it really secure. Another thing we wanted to do when we build the agent is keep the protocol simple, so we decided to go with the new line delimited JSON. Here's an example of the outgoing message. In this case, we send a heartbeat, which is kind of like a ping, so we have a, this semi-structured JSON. Some of the fields like ID and version and so on are required, and other stuff like params are optional and depend on the actual method. And here's the response from the server, for example. Here's a graph which shows uh, memory usage of agents written in different programming languages. There's an agent written in C++, Ruby, and so on, and there's our Virgo, which only uses around like five megabytes of memory. We could actually go even lower, but because of, we also wanted to make the whole agent really close cross-platform and portable, so we decided to statically li link all the libraries, which does increase memory usage a bit, especially because we link against libopenSSL, which is known to take a lot of memory. And here's a quick diagram of the our endpoint architecture. Basically, agent connects to multiple endpoints. That's for 
high availability reasons. So if one of the, our data centers goes down, for example, your agent can still send some metrics for, to us and we can process them and send an alert, for example. Basically, agent establishes three persistent long-running connections, but it actually only sends data, which is metrics and item system information over one connection. And if this connection dies, other connection, other secondary connection is promoted to a primary connection. So I guess that's it. I hope you, I got you interested. And if you have a similar problem, for example, if you want to embed something or you need a low memory pr footprint and fast execution, you should probably check Lovett and Virgo. And I also want to add that, yeah, if you're interested in this kind of problems, my company, Rexpace, is looking for new people to join us. So let me know. Go to this website or send me an email or find me around, the, around this room after the talk, I guess. Thank you. Oh yeah, and also have some Apache Leap Cloud, Rackspace Cloud Monitoring, and Rackspace Service Registry stickers. I'll leave them on the desk and you can go grab it. <laughs>